All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street School. As you and we're back with another video, another UGA recruiting watch video. From everything I've heard so far from random sources, again, I'm just a typical Georgia fan. I don't have any like crazy insider sources. I'm just like y'all where I'm doing extreme research every day. I have an on three subscription. I'm checking every website, every Twitter account, everything every day. I'm looking at 247 on three rankings every day and stuff like that. So just based off, of, I'm on the message boards, all of that based off of everything from what I'm hearing and reading everywhere. It sounds like as of today, Williams Winery is leaning towards us but i saw something to the extent that he said that he's pretty much kind of made up his mind and at this point he's just waiting to announce it and nothing's mu not much is going to change from here until when he announces his commitment which i think he's i think he's august 1st i think justin williams we're not sure yet but it's supposed to be sometime soonish um i think williams Winery is august 1st i think kj bolden is august 5th if i'm wrong let me know and then nathaniel frazier nate frazier um, they're saying that it may be sometime during the season. They'll probably take an official visit to Georgia at some point. Like, I think the South Carolina game I heard. Something like that. But either way, um, as of right now, it seems like from what I, everywhere I'm hearing, Williams Noweri is leading towards Georgia. But from his mouth, he said he's already basically decided where he's going. He's just waiting to announce it. So does that mean that Georgia has this in the bag and there's no chance of anybody else swooping in and taking the lead at the last second type of thing? I guess we'll have to see. But either way, man, we're here to do a five-star defensive lineman, my fault, Williams Noweri film session. Had to go ahead and change that real quick like nothing ever happened. Don't even go back and look at the previous two minutes. Don't even <laughs> do it. That was supposed to say defensive line. But you know, pimps make mistakes too, man. Pimps mess up too. But either way, man, I'm really excited to talk about this guy because he is the not only number one defensive lineman in the country, not only the number one player from Missouri, but according to on three, he's the best player in the country, period. Like, Dylan Rayola slid down a few slots. And then Ellis Robinson, I believe, is up to the fourth overall player now with good reason because, I mean, I'm one of those people that believes that Jeremiah Smith is like literally the next Julio Jones. You can argue he's the best receiver to come out of high school, maybe even since Julio Jones. If we're just talking pure, natural, God-given ability type of stuff, he's like literally the next Julio. And Ellis Robinson Jr. was literally locking him down in that whatever that little camp was so he deserves it and williams noweri we're gonna look at the tape i've already seen a couple of highlights but like always i always try to avoid watching people's huddles until i do these film sessions because i kind of want it to be like a live reaction from me as well so i already know how good he is generally i have like a good concept of it from a few things i've seen but i wait to dive into these guys huddle until i'm hitting the record button because i want y'all to get my live reaction like oh okay like i feel like it, it, it would feel a little fake if i already know a certain hit a certain play a certain movie put somebody on somebody is coming but like if it's like my first time seeing it genuinely and you see how i'm like oh that boy nice I just feel like it hits a little different, so I try to avoid the huddles, so I have avoided the huddle, but I have seen enough to be like, okay, I can kind of see why some people feel like he may be the number one overall player out of this high school recruiting class. I haven't seen enough to feel that way just yet, but maybe we'll walk away with that feeling after this film session. Um, originally, he was somewhere in the double digits, I think, or maybe like lower, um, higher single digits or something. But again, as of just a few days ago, when on 3 did their updated their rankings, and they'll probably do it two more times before the end of this recruiting cycle, um, he's now the number one overall player. And so I can't wait to look at this because Georgia's defensive line is already really deep. Most notably, like Joseph Jonah Ajayi, I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's a certified five star. Speaking of him, he also rose pretty far in the on threes updated rankings as well. And even though he doesn't have that fifth star yet, he's in fifth star rank because he's like a range. My fault. He's like a top 25, something like that. Player top. 30 or something like that and that's a five star basically so he's gonna get that fifth star i don't know why they haven't given it to him yet but he's worthy of it he's very raw joseph jonah johnny gotta admit really raw but he's gonna come in and joseph jonah johnny on one end and williams noary on the other end is crazy george is already trying to basically project him 
as like a five tech, like an edge rusher, basically like a Joseph Jonah and Janye. They no longer recruit Nolan Smiths. They're not looking for the Von Millers anymore. They're looking for the Chase Youngs, the Montez Sweats. I'm a Redskins, Washington football team commanders fan, so that's like the best way I can word it. But we're looking for more people like, I mean, Damon Wilson that we stole from Ohio State, like the bigger guys that can set the edge and also have pass rush potential. But we need you to set that edge. We need you to be six foot five at least and at least like 250. We don't want these six foot three 192 10 type of guys anymore we want true edge setters guys that can play on the outside most of the time but in like obvious passing downs like third and long fourth and long and stuff like that we'll move joseph jonah johnny and williams nowhere to three tech inside and then have like michael williams on the other side and you know stuff like that and it can get real deadly at that point because then you have your best pass rushers on the field and there's no way people are going to pick up first downs in those situations especially with us running so much co um shell coverage with the two safeties over top where are you going to throw the ball All these corners and linebackers flying around i don't know what a quarterback would be able to do against that so man we got to find a way to bring in Williams Noeri man I'm still not exactly sure how to pronounce his name I've been pronouncing it Noeri or some people just say Winery I try to pronounce the N I'm hoping he's Nigerian that's another thing George is trying to put together the all-time Nigerian nightmare too we, are, we already have Joseph Jonah Ajanye we have the I think his name is Oboko I can't remember his, exactly how to pronounce his name and then if you add Williams Noeri there that's a crazy class just there alone just from that talent and then we already built up the trenches on the offensive line side so we're continuing to build it up the defense line um even with depth pieces like justin green and and then we we got buddy from that went to maze um just 10 minutes away went up to uh benjamin e maze i think quintavious i think his name was something like that we we have a load of, a lot of talent in this class to where if we don't even get for some crazy reason we don't get any more five stars this is still a really really good class but i think we will i think kj bowden's leaning towards us i think that daniel frazier's leading towards us i think we may get williams noary and i also think we'll get justin williams but i've already talked y'all heads off enough i'm sorry i like to do it in depth um, breakdown of who we're looking at before we even dive into the film where Georgia sits with them are they likely to go to Georgia where does Georgia see them as a player like a five tech three if we're talking defensive line if we're talking linebacker outside linebacker off ball linebacker inside linebacker corner slot corner star aka um, Buffalo nickel that some teams call it in the NFL like my Redskins call it the Buffalo nickel my Georgia Bulldogs call it the star um, safety free safety all of that type of stuff I try to be specific are we talking slot receiver outside receiver receiver xyz i try to give y'all a good just like general idea of where georgia projects a certain player if they were to come to georgia and then we dive into the film session with that in mind like you're looking at him okay this is a georgia five tech so let's watch the tape that way because there's going to be times he's playing three tech like I already said for certain situations obvious pass rushing downs he may do that for georgia but typically he will be a five tech um so yeah man again i'm sorry for basically babbling and rambling on for so long we're going to go ahead and get to the film session now but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm that subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button really appreciate it man so y'all can get updates and notifications each and every time i release any of my content film sessions like these like i said i'm doing a whole bunch of film sessions with guys who have already committed to georgia guys who may potentially commit to georgia and i need to catch up on a lot of the guys that have already committed i want to hopefully find the time to do film sessions on literally every single player that commits to georgia we're gonna end up like in the 30s like low 30s like 32 or something like that i think so i got some catching up to do i still got to deal in Raiola. i still got to do chauncey bowens i have a lot of guys i have to catch up on so stay tuned for all the film sessions but also i want to do more content where i'm just not purely a film session channel for this channel so man make sure y'all stay tuned without further ado let's get it All right, so this guy, as a junior, I mean, he's going into his senior year now, six foot six, 260 pounds. Can we stop? Can we stop? When, and you're going to see. One thing I remember from watching a couple of his highlights is that he just looks like the biggest person on the field. He looks even bigger than 260. It's something about him. Like, if you just take, like, a like a picture from Google and then you grab, like, the top right of it and extend it, that's, like, the type of comparison he looks like to everybody else. It's weird. He doesn't just look taller and bigger. It looks like, literally, if you just take a picture and just stretch 
stretch it out diagonally to just make it bigger overall like arms bigger legs bigger head bigger everything it's just like weird he just looks like a monster on the field so again this guy's ranked well, this is the 03 um, on three industry ranking, which takes into consideration everybody's. But on three themselves, if it's just up to them, they're not taking into, they're not hearing any outside noise, taking into any outside calculations. They feel like he's literally the number one player in this entire class. Matter of fact, we can look at the class while we chilling before we get here. They got Williams Noary, Jeremiah Smith. Oh, Ellis Robinson is now third. Okay, so we could potentially have the number one, the number three the number nine and julian saying just went up i think he's good but i think he went up just because of that uh, qb elite thing we can have the one three nine eleven 14 and 15th best players in the class that's historical y'all if we pull that off then you have J Jaden riddell is now 22 wow that's beautiful and then joseph jonah Janye is 24 all of these guys will be five stars. If you're in the top 30, you're supposed to be a five star. So I don't know when they're going to finally give them to him. We're still competing for Mike Matthews. Oh, Elja McCray skyrocketed up the board. I don't even remember him being in the double digits. This is a guy that George is really heavy on. I've, I've heard from somewhere that George actually really likes this guy and feel like he could arguably have the highest ceiling out of all the defensive linemen in this class. And so that may be a guy that we're pursuing. But now he's all the way up to 34. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, man, I'm sitting here digressing. Let's go ahead and get to this film session because that's what y'all came here for. Just to let you know he's from Lee's Summit North from Missouri. Um, that's why Jaden Riddell, I believe he's from Missouri as well. I I've heard that Jaden Riddell's doing a lot of um, uh, recruiting for Williams Noary for Georgia as well. So that's good to hear. But let's go ahead and dive into this huddle, man. I'm sorry for wasting y'all time. Let's get it, man. I'm so excited. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love this. Uh, th I mean, number one overall player in the class. This should get really crazy. This should get really crazy. Hold on. Let's take this back. I'm sorry. I kept pressing the space bar. And instead of it pausing like that, it was just scrolling down. That's me. That's just me being slow in the beginning. We have Williams Noary right here. So literally just like looks like the biggest human on the thing. Like, oh, my God. Can we stop and look at the move? First of all, ball get off wasn't ridiculous, even though I've seen enough from his highlights. to know he has great ball get off. It just didn't necessarily show here. And maybe if we had like a sideline view. Um, we could actually see how much power and explosion he leads with off the ball, but it's kind of hard to see from this angle. Um, he's doing that little eye. Right, so this is a move that it like right now as again, as a commanders fan, Chase Young has been trying to pull this move off and it hasn't been working. Um, but it's like that little stutter bull rush thing. Um, and he, oh my God, it just look, why does he look like he's just zoomed in? It looks like Williams Noary is like closer to the screen than this guy you know what i'm saying like he just looks way bigger than people it's really weird i don't really remember feeling like that for a lot of guys he literally looks like really this guy is here and williams noary is like back here but closer to the camera like floating in the air it's really hard to explain he just looks way too big uh like he looks like a basketball player out there it's absolutely insane but um yeah he did like a little stutter but instead of doing the stutter bull rush he goes with like a stutter swim and golly man hands are violent he's already pretty advanced with his move set and now the quarterback target acquired locked on heat seeking missile poor baby to not see somebody that huge coming at you with that much momentum and force has to be scary bro i would never not look at williams noary after that all right now it looks like he's on the yeah they have three defensive linemen he's the edge no no they have four defensive linemen my fault i'm tripping and he's at three tech right now he's a interior defensive lineman and i don't know what happened there he just zoomed right by buddy i don't even know what that was again another stutter the guy starts to relax a little bit for some reason his hands are at his knees instead of up so this is kind of like a level of competition type of thing but also williams noary for a reason is the number one player according to on three he's just that great as well it's probably a mix of both L low level of competition and williams noary is just the best player by far on the field and he deserves that number one overall ranking but this guy's hands are down and maybe you can give williams noary a little bit of credit for that with that stutter for basically rocking him to sleep but either way man it's too late now this guy's too big and that's just that's just food right there you're just leaving your quarterback out there to die man where was williams noary on this i wasn't even paying attention where is he at right here i just need to look for the ridiculously huge human being i guess 
Okay, there he goes right there pursuing from Bob. Okay, good pursuit, good pursuit. Not giving up on the play. I say this with all of the players that we've done film sessions on. I always take a little moment to talk about how these guys that are four-star, five-star guys, and everybody's talking to them, telling them, letting them know, getting in their head, you're a star. You can go to the back-to-back -back national champions. They want you. You're one of the best players in the country. And to have that and still want to make effort plays like this, like doing whatever it takes to win, not just simply like, ah, somebody else will get them. I'll try my hardest and do my thing and just get a sack the next play and look great in my highlight tape. But Williams Noweri, along with a lot of guys we talked about, KJ Bolden, Justin um, Justin Williams, Joseph Jonah Ajayi, Kirby Smart does not care about how talented you are and that's it. That's not the only thing. You can be the most talented kid in the world, but if you don't show effort like this, the will to win, to do everything you need to do to, to win the game, Kirby Smart doesn't want you. He wants you to be physically elite and mentally elite at the same time. Williams Nwari already looks like he checks that box off just by one play. So here he goes right here on the interior defensive line again. Another stuff. Oh, I love the hands. See, I mean... He's just so explosive off the ball. He's so strong and stuff that you would love it if he just straight up, as soon as he snap came off the snap, was bull rushing or attacking the guy so we could see some pop. But even then, without that, with him basically just getting rid of all of his momentum and going into a juke move like he's a running back, like he's LaShawn McCoy out there, and he still finds the way to, first of all, longer arms. You're usually going to be in the control of the situation. Right now, it looks like it's evenly matched, but he's in control. That pop right there with, with no momentum. Again, this guy is laterally juking, just backpedaling, but going forward a little bit, like just stutter stepping. If he would have just exploded off the line and went straight into this guy with that same amount of power, hand power, and hand strength he just put in here. He's probably pancaking this guy, even with that ridiculous anchor. Because he throws him off balance like that after stutter stepping. No real momentum off of him coming up off the ground after the ball was snapped. I can only imagine how crazy this would be if he just, instead of stuttering, just went straight after, after the guy, went at him. Oh my lord, and then the pop right there. You see how the guy just, huh, like he just got tackled? Like... Off of just hands, like no legs really involved, no momentum, just hands. That's how powerful Williams Nowhere's hands are right there, bro. This is ridiculous, dog. This is crazy, man. Georgia, please find a way to get this guy. I, I beg you, man. I beg you. Oh, my. There it goes. That's what I'm talking about. The momentum and the power when exploding off the ball. Don't stutter step. Don't get rid of some of your momentum and power with that stutter step. Doesn't seem to really matter because he dominates anyway. But then again, he's going to go to a higher level of competition going from St. Louis to playing at Georgia. With When we're out here recording on a, recruiting on average like six foot six, 350 pound offensive lineman, you, you're, you're not going to be able to win just off of just I'm more athletic and stronger than you. There's going to have to be some improved technique or then again maybe the coaches are telling him to do that or whatever either way though you see on this play that he's perfectly capable of not having a stutter step and when he explodes completely off the ball and goes straight at the offensive lineman it's really unfair you see that level you see that amount of strength he threw in there exploding off the ball and just complete i mean god lee he made his offensive lineman sack his own quarterback look at that look at that look at that he turned him into an additional defender just like how Derrick Henry turned Josh Norman into an additional blocker. This man turned the offensive lineman into another. The off the tackle got credit for half a sack on that play. You know. <laughs> Word around the street is that tackle got credited with a half a sack on this play. God, Lee Williams, the worry. Out here making people into double agents. I see. You. All right, we got, um. it looks like. On the interior again at three tech once again again i think he's gonna play quite a bit of both at georgia but we have such monsters and big guys like jordan hall for example that's gonna play interior we have bigger guys for that williams nowhere is the prototypical edge rusher five tech that georgia wants so we'll see how that goes and then the penetration right there interior this is what i'm talking about him against guards with that length, that speed, that explosion, that quickness, that footwork is unfair. He's going to be able to run past pretty much every guard in college for the most part, easily. Um, and so that's why when it's obvious pass rush situations, you move him on inside and he just runs right by the guard like that. It's unfair. It's unfair. I don't even know why. Like, OK, see, this is like. He's clearly the best player on the field. Why would you disrespect him like this? Why do you make the guard in front of him, the right guard, directly in front of him, pull and then hope that the tackle can get there in time to get in front of him? No! 
he's he's the best player in the country according to you know rankings and stuff like this now of course the rankings weren't out there he wasn't the number one player at this time but y'all had to have watched y'all film and noticed that this guy is different and that he's an elite player he's the best player on the entire field right now why would you disrespect him like that come on now man i can't i don't even know exactly what to make of that play and then he's out here blocking kicks on special teams. That's that. Those are the intangibles. That's the not only being physically elite, but mentally elite as well. Because some players that are elite, especially number one overall players in the country, the best high school player in the country, would just be like, man, I'm a star at edge rusher. Don't even play me at special teams, coach. I'm too good for that. And the fact that he's not only willing to play special teams, but to make plays like this. Were they afraid to block him? Like, why did they not even try? The guy just put his arm out and basically became a turnstile. Like, check. All right, that's another one person that came into the theme park. All right, you next. Okay, another person, another tally. Like, he didn't really try to, like, are we afraid of Williams Noweri with a head full of steam? I mean, we've seen him off a of stutter step. It blow an offensive lineman almost to his back. So him with a full head of speed running? I can see why they didn't want no parts of that. But dang, man, poor punter. Y'all really beam in that punter from any given Sunday. I, if I was that punter, everybody got to line up and fight me after this game after that. Because that's ridiculous, dog. Oh, and then he's part of the block, too? Yes, sir! Kirby, that's what Kirby Smart loves. That's what I love. That's what we love. He's a Georgia dog, man. Come on, pull up, bro. I love that. Block the punt. And don't even just like start celebrating, run into the sideline. Yeah, like my job is done. You just made a crazy play that most people never make in their entire lives, high school, college, or NFL. Like just never block a punt. You made the play of the day and you're still out here doing what you can to contribute. Look at this block. Oh, I love it. I love the mentality. I love the attitude. I love it, man. I don't even know why they didn't mob him after. You saw how everybody came off the sideline and went to the guy to recover the punt. I know he has the football, but y'all have to know that Williams Nawari not only blocked the punt, but just knocked somebody out. Why are y'all not rushing to get him? Okay, and then my point again. Look at everybody on the sideline. Look how much bigger he is than everybody else. Like, just grown man. Who invited this man to the sideline with children? It's just different, bro. He's a freak of nature. They don't make guys like this. Now he's at three tech again. One on one. I love the active hands. The first move didn't work. The first move did not work. I would love it if he can get a little bit lower. But when you're six foot six, what can you do? But he's low. He's relatively low. It's not like he's just standing straight up. But it would be nice if he could get lower just to be extra critical, to be extremely nitpicky. But it doesn't matter. The first move doesn't really work. And he does whatever he can. I mean, it was kind of like a like an engaged pool and then get off of me, like swim around them type of thing. I love the active hands. The hands are constantly moving, violent. Get off of me. I'm trying to make a play. I'm trying to add you to my highlights, boy. Stop playing. Let's go next play. He's at three tech again. I, I think we've seen more three tech plays than five tech, but you got to remember he's the biggest guy on the field. He's so I understand why they're playing in, on the, in the interior more than anything else. But Georgia, again, we have even bigger guys that is going to play in the interior. That's why he's more of an edge rusher, a five tech. We'll see. Oh, OK, 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 OK. So you beat Buddy with this move at one point. So he's like, OK, OK. So to not get beat by that, let me play this a little differently. Let me try to. OK, he's going to grab me. move. So let me try to let me let me adjust to that. By like, let me set my feet. Let me get ready because he may pull something crazy. Williams Nawari, chest not checkers. Just runs right by him with a club. Get off of me. I'm out. You guys, you're out here Willie Beeman in your quarterback from any given Sunday right now. You're about to get this guy hurt out here. I love it, man. The chess match. He has a bag. That's big, man. For a guy coming out of high school to have a bag, multiple moves. He has a stutter step swim i'm assuming if you have a stutter step swim even though we haven't seen it yet you have a stutter step bull rush as well stutter step just rush then we've seen the previous play where he like just completely grabbed the guy threw him in and swam over him and now to just go straight with a club and that's an edge rusher move that's a really weird move to pull off from the interior that is purely something that you usually do out here he's doing that from the interior defensive line that literally looks like jj watt tell me i'm lying does that not literally look like J.J. Watt coming off the edge? Literally J.J. Watt. That's beautiful, man. That's poetry. That's what I do it for. That's the type of stuff I do it for. If y'all can't tell, too, 
just to take like a quick little moment defensive line is my favorite part of football i know quarterbacks excited running backs excited wide receiver but i am defensive line first and foremost that's why even though my commanders haven't been winning a lot especially in my lifetime at the very least we arguably have the best defensive line in football so at the very least i have that consolation prize i get to look at a really good defensive line every day every sunday that makes me happy and so the fact that georgia is also dominating the d-line which we weren't doing about seven years ago we've had a lot of great position groups but defensive line is fairly recent so i'm very happy to see that and when you recruit guys like this it, it it makes it to where like you really can't you can't fail so this is weird because he's like an interior defensive lineman but he's like why is one guy like the nose tackle Williams Nawari right here, and then you have these guys coming off like the nine, like out the nine. Oh, and okay, so let me just stop babbling and let's look at what Williams Nawari just did. Cause come on, bro, stutter step swim again. That's his move. That's your move. You gonna patent that? You gotta name that something, dog. This little stutter, ah, it's like the. That's what the stutter does, though. That, uh, just to coach you up a little bit, some of y'all may already know that stutter gets the offensive lineman to relax. Like, okay, he's stuttering. Like, I'm waiting. Okay, I was ready to engage, but now he's playing around. So now, you know, mentally, like, oh, okay, you exhale a little bit. You relax a little bit. You know you shouldn't, but you just naturally, after going against this guy all day, like, whoo, I get a second to breathe real quick. As soon as your hands start to go down, he's already going past you. This guy didn't even get a chance to block. This guy basically tried to block him with his collarbone, as you can see. From the way, <laughs> the way this stutter step killed him. Stutter step killed him. Look at that. Man, try to block him with a <laughs> please collarbone. Please reach out. Oh man, that's that's bad, bro. And then the length to bat the ball down. That's why Georgia doesn't recruit like Nolan Smiths like that anymore and stuff like that. They want a guy that can bat the ball down because Brooks Austin shouts out to him, one of my favorite, if not the favorite guy that covers Georgia, Georgia opinions, all that type of stuff. Film such is literally like my favorite. Shouts out to him. He um he basically broke it down and said like Georgia doesn't Georgia wants the guys that are tall enough and big enough that can bat the ball down because teams as you've noticed especially last year it's it's one two three out one two three out one two three out no pass rusher in the history of life can get to the quarterback that fast unless they go and block so you need a guy that's ready to whenever I mean occasionally they will try to scan the field and go through reads and not just throw it to the first receiver pre snap I already know I'm going to him as soon as i take this two step to three step drop is out but sometimes maybe there will be times where it's like a five step drop scan the field look at receivers and then you'll have pass rushes like this that can get to him michael williams all of those guys but you also need the length because most of the time teams are getting the ball out fast and you need to be ready to put those hands up and bat the ball down that's you know that's just a little coaching tip shots out to brooke austin for that again williams nowhere the biggest guy on the field at three tech defensive tackle see what is going on I guess it's a stunt that looked like a stunt so that's why he didn't explode off the ball i like the footwork though i mean he adjusted around buddy a lot of people would trip up in this situation look how their feet almost got tangled like this guy's really agile especially to be six foot six 260 pounds like that could have been dangerous he could have tripped and fell right on his face right there and he just made it look so easy and then this bull rush just ridiculous okay look at where they engage let's let's keep track all right right here they engage on the 48 yard line why is this guy all the way back to the 45 and then williams know where he's running past him like that's strength bro that's strength that strength the offensive lineman was literally waiting on him and still got beat that bad williams know where he now he's the edge rusher now he's the edge rusher let's see all right i get i don't know if that was a tight end or a fullback but he wasn't ready i think that was a tight end and stutter step relax walk right around him don't even have to do nothing he didn't even need his hands williams nowhere just ran by the guy with his hands down literally just pure footwork stutter step technique he has a bag stutter step tight end relaxes a little i could just run by him and i have my arm to throw down whatever hand he might put on me but he didn't even need it the athleticism the speed took over after that and poor quarterback oh my lord just lunch me just road kill just sitting there waiting to get tackled Oh, don't tell me a field goal. Don't tell me the field goal. You can't teach that length, y'all. You can't teach that length. That's why Kirby Smart wants this guy so bad. You can't teach length like that. You literally can't. doesn't matter what you do. This guy makes plays everywhere, defensively and on special teams. Come on now. Who doesn't want this kid? Oh, I love that. Oh, the little chop. The chop off rip. 
He has a bag, y'all. He has a bag. Get that. Get your hands off of me. What are you doing? Come on now. Why do you think you can block me? Look at the. Ah! Get off. Come on now. Now your quarterback's road kill. And interception. And interception. Nah, this is not. Nah, this is insane, bro. This huddle tape is crazy. I wish I can get like access to all 22 footage of all of these kids. I would love that. So I can, cause these, this is just a highlight tape of all of his greatest moments. This is like a greatest hit CD. So it's kind of hard to really evaluate him. You're only looking at positive plays. I would love to see what happens on the plays that he doesn't get to the quarterback, that he's not batting the ball down, that he's not getting the interception. He's not getting the tackle for loss, the sack or whatever. I want to see like if the technique is still sound there, if he's consistent and things like that. But one thing I know for sure, this guy's a freak athlete. You can't can't teach his length you can't teach his explosion his athleticism his strength his speed his quickness his footwork and and then you also i mean you could try to teach this to guys but the fact that this guy's coming with a bag like this that bag right there you've seen this is a this is our first time seeing this move we've seen like five or six different moves already in this one highlight tape that's the one of the main things joseph jonah Ajanye has to work on he doesn't have a bag yet he has a lot of athleticism a lot of potential he doesn't have this bag that williams the has williams the where comes in day one starter because of a bag like this you can't teach that him and michael williams come on dog Come on, bro. And then again, we're not just talking a high floor guy and that's it. With the freakish athleticism and measurables, just the guy given talent and ability, his ceiling is sky high too. This guy has number one pick written all over him, literally. But he's coming in and he can literally play day one for Georgia just because of the bag. All of the athleticism doesn't matter if you don't have a bag. It's going to be hard to play day one. You're probably going to have to sit a year. You'll get some snaps your second year. And then your third year, you'll really get to shine and start. This guy's going to play day one because of this bag right here. I mean, I just feel sorry for this offensive lineman because this guy's had to deal with grab, throw, swim. He's had to deal with stutter, swim. These guys have had to deal with um bull rush was they've had to deal with um chop real quick and then i mean the um i fought the club like just run right by you like jj watt and then you got this chop man this is i don't know what to say man i really don't i really don't let's go edge rusher again oh no interior defensive lineman okay again the bag active hands like you saw earlier i stutter step dip that stutter step dip is killing people that stutter step they relax a little bit because all right it off as an offensive lineman you're hoping that as soon as you explode off the ball after the ball is snapped you can get a hand on the guy pop him when you stutter step that little pop throws him off like oh i can't pop him yet because he's not even at me yet he's not on me yet he's not arranged for me to pop him so they kind of relax they're like okay i gotta figure out when is he coming like do i get ready now and he's always catching them off guard. They're always prepared a little too late. Almost a face mask. And then that dip right there with the club. Get off of me. Come on, bro. That's J.J. Watt, bro. This is a lot of J.J. Watt I'm seeing, dog. I'm not going to lie. Interior defensive lineman once again. I'm just curious. What are we about to do again? Is it another bag? I don't even know what happened there. I don't, that's not even an offensive lineman. Why did y'all even try him like that? I don't know what that was. All right, Williams Nawari play opposite of him and running it down. That's the hustle. That's the one. To oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why did the kid look like that when he got tackled? Oh, my Lord. That's a grown man out there tackling kids. Somebody stop him. Pure bull rush. Get the hands up. That's what I'm talking about. Little. All right, so this was a read option, so it was a little bit slower. But one, two, three, I'm throwing it. Williams the where he's so tall first of all the bull rush helps because you're that close to the quarterback if he wasn't this strong he would have been trying to bat it down from here but he's so strong this bull rush is so ridiculous that he's basically almost there about to sack the quarterback and then again the length to bat the ball down he had plenty of more space to it looked like he hit it with this part of his arm like he had so much more space to oh my lord he was so high up quarterback doesn't know what just happened but I'm pretty sure he's happy that he got rid of the ball instead of holding on to it too long all right, we got him on the interior defensive line again, but they really run a weird formation where this guy's all the way out there. This guy's a wide nine. This guy's at nose tackle, if anything, kind of like a one eye. And then you got him out here like interior defensive lineman, edge rush. I don't know what it is. By the way, let's get to the back. Yeah, the hands are crazy. Because this time, the offensive lineman probably thought he had him. Like offensive lineman, as an offensive lineman, you're like, okay, I got hands on him 
cool. Check. So far, so good. Offense alignment thinking this. Okay. I pushed them back a little bit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm a little off balance. What just happened? Which I was I was good. What just happened all of a sudden? He just pulled me back and moved to the side? What just and then swam over me? Yo, this is bad. This is bad, bad. This is insane. I, I'm starting to think this may be number one overall player in the country, dog. And I'm one of those people that feels like Dylan Rayola should still be the number one player in the country. He has done nothing to disprove that. I don't exactly know why they put him down so far. Um, but And that's where those long arms come in, too, because even though he's that's not even his gap, he's able to hurry up and get there and grab hell of this guy to help with the tackle. Love that. But, yeah, um, I think Dylan Rayola should still be the number one overall player. But... What happened here? What happened, fam? What happened, tackle? What happened, tackle? What happened? That's the bull rush. There goes the bag. Add another move to the bag. Now we've seen a pure bull rush as an edge rusher. And it dominated. Bro, kill. Help this. No, 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 no. Is there a slow motion? Oh, I wish there was a slow motion. Oh, my little look. <laughs> Help him. Help him. Somebody. <laughs> The, the office alignment fell in pieces. He fell in pieces. He melted. He, uh, uh, no, anchor, please, no. <laughs> oh my God, he's sitting down. Come on, dog. I, I mean, there's really nothing to even analyze at this point. This man has a crazy back. Oh my Lord, was that the defensive coordinator's idea? Or did he just know? Because why is he pursuing this play like that? He shot up that gap so quick. Oh my Lord, I can only imagine him at three tech with Michael Williams to the right of him. Oh, my little Joseph Jonah Ajayi on the edge. Then Jordan Hall right here to the left. Like, Joseph Jonah Ajayi, Jordan Hall, Williams Nowhere, Michael Williams. Oh, my Lord. Tackle for losses for days, man. That's just the hypothetical, though, man. Let's see what we got here. Terry defensive lineman again. Don't, don't try to, yeah, pursuit. Yeah, pursuit. Nothing you can do right there as a blocker. I'm not going to lie. We got Williams Nuary once again in the inside. Let's see what happens here. Oh, my Lord, a spin now? Now we getting spins? No, the bag should not be this deep. This this bag is way... Okay, bull rush, you're winning. You're good. The bull rush is working. And then you just decide to spin? Oh, my Lord, bro. The bag is crazy. Nah, this man has a bag of tricks, dog. This is insane. His floor is too high, bro. That's why he's the number one overall player. It's not just potential and ceiling and athleticism. It's the ridiculous floor that he's coming with. This guy can literally play day one. Was that a swim move? What just happened? What just happened? I can't keep up with the bag. I love the engagement to take control of the situation and then get rid of him, swim over him. That's beautiful. That's poetry. And to bat the ball down again and almost get an interception. This is literally poetry. This is what I live for. Again, defensive line is my favorite part of football. So that's why I'm just having so much fun watching this. That's what Georgia wants. Georgia is seeing that. Kirby Smart is seeing these bat downs. First of all, the awareness. Because NFL players, like, again, my commanders, I see them work on this in practice all of the time training camp coming up in a couple of weeks they're going to be working on this literally every day the awareness keep your eyes on the quarterback if you see certain movement like he's probably about to release this soon stop trying to bull rush stop trying to focus all of your attention on this offense alignment i'm gonna need you to get ready to jump up and bat this down and the fact that this guy is already doing things that even five-year nfl vets aren't aren't very good at yet and very nuanced with and consistent the fact that he's already doing that as a high schooler is crazy because, again, a lot of people just get into these sumo matches with offensive linemen. They're like, offensive linemen in front of me? You're my primary obstacle. I know the quarterback is the ultimate goal or the guy who has the ball, but you're my primary obstacle right now. I got to get rid of you. So they just be so engaged and so laser focused and just tunnel vision to that offensive lineman that they don't, they're not aware of everything else going around them. This guy is so good that he doesn't even have to pay too much attention to offense alignment. He's in control of the situation with the long arms, the strength, strong hands, violent hands, and things like that. And then he's keeping his eyes on the quarterback. So as soon as the quarterback looks like, I mean, we got to take this back again to see exactly when Williams Nawari is like, okay, this guy's throwing it right there. He's already like, oh, okay, this guy's throwing it. Let me get up. 
And then the aim, only one hand, because your other hand is tied up with the offensive lineman. To be able to aim that, I think that's a whole nother skill there. Because it doesn't matter how long you are, if you miss, if the ball go, if your hand is here and the ball goes here, goes here, it doesn't matter. So the aim, I mean, this guy's just a complete bag. Everything you can want in a defensive lineman. I know he's gonna he'll get to Georgia and the coaches are gonna be like, I don't even know what to tell you. Just keep doing what you're doing type of thing. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of nitpicky stuff they can work on. But, man, this is one of the best, highest floor defensive linemen I've ever watched tape on, in my personal opinion. This is, like, generational. Like, this floor is ridiculous, dog. This is the type of stuff. You know why Nick Bosa has been more productive than Chase Young? And I love Chase Young. But Chase Young is a far better athlete than Nick Bosa. It's not even close. The reason Nick Bosa has been far more productive and a better player than Chase Young so far since in the NFL is because of technique, nuance, and having a bag. Chase Young needs to work on his bag. He's just pure raw athleticism right now. He's very nuanced when it comes to edge setting and run stopping. I've got to give him credit. He's one of the elites at that. But when it comes to pass rushing, he's not quite there yet. Williams Nawari already has a bag as a junior. We're looking at junior high school tape. Imagine once he gets to Georgia what he's going to be doing i can't wait to even see his senior high school tape i hope i can catch a game live and just watch him type of stuff so that that's why he's going to be a first round pick i think easily i, I mean it's hard to just project a junior in high school to be a number one overall pick but he has everything written on him the ceiling the floor the bag the nick bosa i mean it's something different every play again though i kind of i do want to see just all 22 footage of even his bad plays to see what it what he really is because again we're just looking at his greatest hits right now basically oh my god the immediate swim move that's another bag he's been doing swim moves but usually it's like he, he engages with the guy and then like fights with him for like a second and then does like a swim this time it's literally right off the snap I'm about to swim you. And the guy wasn't ready. Look at him. The guy is basically trying to tackle Williams Nawari right now. He turned the guy into an, a an, uh, an additional defensive lineman. This is the first time out of this whole video he swam this quickly off the snap. Like, immediately. No, like, I'm going to engage with you, fight with you a little bit, then get rid of you. Try to, like, ah, that didn't work. Okay, let me do this. No, straight off the snap, I know pre-snap no matter what you do i'm swimming this is not like a last second decision type of thing he had to have thought of this before the ball was even snapped to be able to pull this off that fast and immediate then right there to make the tackle i would have loved the lower tackle where the guy wouldn't have gotten as many yards but i'll still take it man williams nowhere is different bro that's the end of this film session let's go ahead and move on man that is the end of this film session man i really appreciate y'all man this guy is different like i've already said in the video dog the floor is ridiculous. The ceiling is ridiculous. I think, I think now I see number one overall prospect. I see it. I, I, I just I can't remember the last time I've seen a player in his junior highlights and his bag is this deep. He's just that his floor is that high. I just I'm just amazed. I I don't I don't even know what to say. I mean the 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 ceiling is there. I love ceilings just like Joseph Jonah John. Yeah, I love ceilings. I love the athleticism. I love the lens six for six two sixty. Really fast, really agile, great feet, all of that stuff. Violent hands, active hands, and stuff like that. Love the effort. But then on, but what separates him from being a five star prospect to being the number one overall prospect is that high floor, that bag, that bag of tricks, all of those moves, the counters, the swim, the club, the stutter, the stutter bull rush, the stutter swim, the stutter dip club, like the the chop like this is yo he's different dog he's quite different so man williams nowhere already see you in that georgia uniform from that visit make sure you go ahead and just commit to us and sign with us on signing day become an early enrollee and i promise you i mean georgia's already shown you by uh, malachi starks and michael williams that if you come in and ball out even as a true freshman you can not only play but start for georgia doesn't matter how good the guys are already on the team they're veterans they've been here for two three plus years it doesn't matter if you're the best player on the team kirby smart's gonna start you it doesn't matter how young you are if you are the best guy for the job he will start you so williams no worry with that bag i think you could easily be a day one starter i hope they got that through his head 
I know a lot of people, like a lot of five stars, the reason Georgia isn't going to necessarily get some of these guys that we wish we would have gotten is because of playing time, especially like linebackers. I'm surprised Justin Williams. I mean, but again, he's one of those ones where he could probably come in and start because he's such a freak athlete and already has a higher floor than a high school player should. Already a little bit more nuanced, smart, IQ, awareness, more proactive rather than reactive. One of my favorite things about a linebacker, he already has that too, so he could probably start early as well. But like linebacker, offensive line and stuff like that it's going to be hard to get early playing time so that's why we're missing out on some of these elite talents where if we had a hole in that position and georgia could promise oh yeah you can come in and be a day one starter maybe some of these five stars that are going elsewhere would probably come to us but at the same time if you're if you love competition if you're not afraid of a challenge and you think you can come in and start day one kirby smart is like by all means come in and if you earn that job you earn it you straight up earn it. I'm not about to start a guy over you just because he's a senior. I, if you come in and you're better than that senior, you're starting, plain and simple. So I think that's the message for KJ Bolden. I think that's the message for Williams Nawari. I think that's the message for Justin Williams, potentially, even though we had arguably the best linebacker recruiting class of all time last, uh, this 20, the last 2023 recruiting cycle. And then it looks like we may even do something similar. We're getting Justin Williams and Chris Cole, all of those guys, uh, Chris Jones and all it's just it's ridiculous but i hope they got the message to william nowhere's head that you could come in and start immediately case in point michael williams and malachi starks same thing with kj bowling to malachi starks williams nowhere with michael williams come in start immediately if you're that good if you think you're that good to the back-to-back -back champion team but yeah man i appreciate all the support man please leave a comment on this video how you felt about him as a player how you feel about me as an analyst do you agree or disagree with any of my points let me know again i take even harsh critiques i take positive and negative criticism all of it so i really appreciate it if y'all got in the comment sections and engaged with me i'm gonna try to read all the comments and engage back and reply and stuff like that so i really appreciate y'all shouts out to all y'all make sure again y'all stiff arm that like button you stiff arm that subscription button because i'm coming with constant content i'm trying to make it daily but sometimes i'm just too busy between the two channels and just life in general but y'all are not gonna go three days without a georgia video point blank period so stay tuned for all the content and with every long film session i do like this i even do a short for one of the best moments in it so man, make sure you stay tuned for all of the content man i'm really excited stay tuned to the channel georgia bulldogs all the way man go dogs i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out